Okay, geometry fans, our topic for today is the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, so after this lesson, students should be able to understand how to set up the Pythagorean theorem and then use the Pythagorean theorem to solve problems. So before we start, let me tell you your joke of the day. The question is, how does NASA organize a party? And the answer is, they plan it. Plan it. P-L-A-N-E-T. Okay, so we're going to skip this part here with YouTube, but if you want to go to this site, it's kind of a cool demonstration visually of the Pythagorean theorem. When you have a right triangle, we're going to call the three sides A, B, C. Now notice that I label this with small letters. These are not the points. They're not the vertices, but if you use a lowercase letter, that means that those are the sides. In a right triangle, the two sides that are perpendicular that create your 90 degree angle, those are called legs. So A and B are the legs. Now the side that is opposite the 90 degrees is always called the hypotenuse. And that's always the longest side in a right triangle. Hypotenuse is the longest side. It has to be longest because 90 is the biggest angle. And we learned a couple chapters ago that the biggest side is always opposite the biggest angle. Now, the Pythagorean theorem is really, it's a formula. And the formula goes like this. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This is probably the most famous formula in geometry. If you're going to remember one thing, this would probably be it. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And we can write that with the terms leg squared plus leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. The hypotenuse is always the value squared that's by itself. A and B are your legs. You square them, you add them, and then that's equal to the hypotenuse squared. Now the idea of this, when you have a right triangle, okay, we'll just draw a little sketch here, the way that the people thought about this, you know, thousands of years ago was literally they talked about a square. When you take, so here's A and here's B. If I made a square where all the sides were A's, okay, so all of these are A's. And if I made a square where all of these were B's, each side was length B, this is literally A squared. That's the area. It would be A times A. And the area of this bottom square is b squared. And what people realized was that if I take the third side, if I take the hypotenuse c, and then I draw a square based on that, and if I calculate that area c squared, I could actually take the area of the a square, I could combine it with the area of the b square, and what it would give me is the area of the c square. So literally, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that's a visual way of using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so let's do some examples that are more algebraic. Example number one, we want to find x. Now first of all, I need to identify the hypotenuse is my x in this case. So my a and b are 3 and 4. So when I set this up, I can say 3 squared plus 4 squared equals x squared. So there's my equation. Now I'm going to simplify. 3 squared is 3 times 3, so that's 9. 4 squared is 16. And now we add those. 9 plus 16 is 25 equals x squared. Okay, now to solve this, to finish this, I need to get this to just be x. So how do I undo a square well, I have to take the square root of both sides. That's an inverse operation. If you're trying to undo addition, you subtract. If you're trying to undo multiplication, you divide. If you want to undo a square, you have to do the square root. So we can use the calculator on this. The square root button is, well, you've got the square button is x squared, but if I take second x squared, there's a little square root right above it square root of 25. I always close parentheses 
square root of 25 equals 5. So my answer is 5 equals x. That's it. All right, let's do number 2. So we've got 6, 8. Now the hypotenuse, that's going to be my x again. So you can label that C or you can label it, you know, HYP, hypotenuse. So my legs are 6 and 8. So I'm going to square the legs and add them. 6 squared plus 8 squared equals x squared. So now we got 36 plus 64. That adds up to 100 equals x squared. Now to solve it, I have to undo the square. So I take the square root of both sides. The square root of 100 is 10. So we have 10 equals x. And that's it. Now on number three, number three is a little bit different. The hypotenuse, which is opposite 90 degrees. This time, that's a number. My variable is one of my legs. Okay, so if I want to say here's A and here's B, now when I set it up, it's x squared plus 5 squared equals 13 squared. The hypotenuse is always the side by itself in the equation. The two legs are on the same side. So this is x squared plus 25 equals 169. Okay, now I need to move the 25. Before I can take the square root, I need to move this constant. So I go minus 25 minus 25, and we get x squared equals... 144. Now the last step, we can take the square root and we get x equals 12. That's the answer. Now one thing about this, so here's 12. 13 should be the longest side. So if I got something bigger than 13 for x, I would know I'm wrong because the longest side is always the hypotenuse. So the 12 makes sense. 12 makes sense as an answer. All right, go ahead and flip the page, and we'll look at some more examples. Okay, now we'll do some you know, more kind of wordy problems here. In number four, what is the length of the altitude of the following isosceles triangle? All right, now there's a couple relationships here we need to be aware of. Altitude means... Basically, height. It's the same word as height. A height always is 90 degrees. So the altitude is right here. It's this length x because that's what's creating the 90 degrees. You've got the big triangles, isosceles. What we're doing is we're dropping in altitude. So that right there is the altitude. And... So altitude, when you think altitude, always think 90 degrees, okay, perpendicular. And then the idea that it's isosceles, okay, the big triangle is isosceles. When you drop an altitude from this vertex angle, what happens in an isosceles triangle is it bisects the base. So what happens, this 32 gets cut in half. So each piece here is 16 and 16. The reason why you would draw the altitude, okay, we'll come back to that. As soon as you get a right angle, start looking for right triangles. Okay, we actually have two of them. We have this one on the left, and then we have this one on the right. Now I'm going to draw the one on the right separately, and we had this was x. Now at the bottom here, this is 16. 32 is the whole thing but it got cut in half, and then this is 20. You have a right triangle, start thinking Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared is c squared. And in this case, our c value, the hypotenuse is 20. That would be the c. Here's a and b. So we can say x squared plus 16 squared equals 20 squared. Now you solve it. So we got x squared plus 256 is equal to 400. We'll subtract 256, and we get x squared equals 144. All right, we just dealt with this. Take the square root of both sides. x is equal to 12. 
So you're going to have a lot of problems. And then not just this chapter, but even when we talk about circles, when we get into area and volume, Pythagorean theorem. Anytime you have a right triangle, start thinking a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's the end of part one. So go ahead and uh, move on to part two, and we'll look at the last couple examples.